Hello and welcome to the channel. Um, we are going to be setting up and assembling some of this little stuff on the excavator and getting it ready for its first dig. Uh, so stay tuned for that um, and um, let's hop right into it. Okay, so let's get into the setup. The first thing you're gonna need to do is unwrap this ram because it comes nicely wrapped up. You're gonna need to undo this bolt right there with the wrench they provide. Uh, the bolt comes out, there'll also be a sleeve. Pull that out as well. Take the ram, line it up. It'll be able to move it. Um, slide the sleeve in first and then the bolt. Hand tighten it and you're good to go. Uh, some folks may put Loctite under. I chose not to. Uh, I don't want to over tighten it either because it'll actually uh, strip um, what it ties into. Uh, you kind of see the little fastener they put here kind of for show, for detail. I think that looks really well. So just tighten it. I kind of felt this other one. I stuck the wrench in there and felt the tightness of this other one. And it basically tightened it the same. I didn't want to over tighten it either. But you would also don't want it loose. Uh, so I did that. Then I moved on to removing this lid. There are four uh, little screws like this or little uh, Allen wrench screws just like that. You are going to need uh, this really small size. I forget what it is. I think it's like a, uh, I think it's like a two or a three. I can't remember. Um, I got mine out of order and the thing that they go in. So I don't know the size off the top of my hand, uh, but you'll fit the right one. Unscrew all four screws and kind of set this to the side. Be careful because you can scratch your paint. Um, and then once I did that, I kind of looked at the system. I saw that they zip tied everything really neatly. I saw how they ran the system, how they zip tied and organized it. Saw that there's three ESCs down here. The big one is your 40 amp, your main brush, uh, your main pump. They have a power block right here that all the wires plug into. Um, I like that. I like the fact how they uh, how they kind of zip tied and organized everything really, really neatly. It just looks absolutely stunning. Look at the size of that motor. It is unbelievable. There's the tubing. You can see that there's oil in the system. There's not when you get it, just to let you know. Um, I did buy, obviously, an XT60 battery. So if you don't have to do any soldering, or you can change it to your favorite connection. That doesn't matter. As long as it can handle that kind of power, because it is 3S, by the way. Um, that's an ADC. I doubt it's going to do that high of a discharge rating, but um, that's an ADC, by the way. Um, so pin in, unscrew the panel, kind of take over, look over everything. Look at the size of these servos, kind of blew me away. There is three of them. Obviously there is a total of six lines. There is a little splitter block down here that separates it from two to four. You kind of see that. And then both of these rams are fed. I really like that. This is your pressure increase and decrease. This is your pressure release, like uh, to relieve pressure in case the system's kind of locked up. Uh, there's your MPA gauge, your breathing, and then your adding oil is right there. That little bolt that just unscrews. It's kind of like a little thing, just unscrew it, and then you can put oil in there. Um, this is a Phi Sky receiver, just like the one in the 336. They have it really nicely on its side. I mean, they just did a great job the way they designed this. This is perfect. Plenty of room for a battery. Technically, you can fit, you can scoot the battery up against the tank. You have plenty of room for a radiator or fan there. I have plenty of room to put a fan right here to blow on all these ESCs. You can really do some modifications here if you wanted to, of course. I don't honestly think I'm going to really be modifying this, except small little touches to make it my own. Um, we'll see, though, how, you know, how things progress. Uh, it's funny because these fittings are the ones I accidentally ordered, so I have these in case one of these ever leak or break. I actually have these. It's kind of ironic. Um, this is the bend I needed in the 336 that's the bend i'm going to try to achieve uh with the same kind of kink guard on it so that's beautiful i love the way they did that uh the bottles the buckets reinforced with the removable teeth but anyways um as far as the setup goes to so do that then you want to build your little mirrors it's three pieces this bottom piece the arm and then the top part and then obviously the glass piece that just double sided sticky tape in there that's it once you place it super a little dab of super glue here a little dab of super glue there just to keep it from moving too easy on you that way it doesn't like when you're driving it doesn't like shake and move uh same thing with the other side very easy to assemble uh and then there's just this little um i guess like a tinted moon roof or whatever piece that you just have to wipe it 
and then it's double sided. It has a piece of sticky sheet on there and you just press it down and you're golden. That's very easy. The lights themselves have no wiring or lights in them, but they have these little caps. You do want to put them in so there's not just a hole. It looks kind of silly. They just kind of snap into place and do not come out. Obviously, you can push them from the other side with a tool. You can push them back out. Um, that's where the light kit would go. That There is a um, RC four-wheel drive light kit that is made for this. I just popped in these so it doesn't look silly with no uh, light covers in there, right? That looks much better. These ones were already rent up here. So I think the light kit comes with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lights. I think one more you could put in the cab or in here, wherever you want. I thought that was cool. So that light kit's not cheap. I think it's like 40 or 50 bucks, something like that. Um, so there is that. Uh, the sticker sheet, the Volvo scale sticker sheet is the EC480L uh, Volvo sticker sheet. Uh, that should be here really, really soon. Uh, that's why I did not put the Earth sticker digger stickers on her and then the 360L because this is technically scaled off of 480 uh, EC Volvo 480 uh, L or D I can't remember which one it is but yeah that's what it's scaled off of so that's what I'm going to do I want this to be really scale um, to me uh, you can do paint touches up like here black here black on the handle you can do paint like the seat like paint like the levers black and just little touches like that will make a huge difference I did put my character I hinted with in there uh behind your door is where your serial number is see they ground it right into there uh um so that's my serial number for the machine i thought that was kind of cool um so once you installed your mirrors your pin remove this lid um and your sunroof all you really have left is the stickers if you want to do that that's up to you obviously the light covers pop them in uh and then the next thing you'd want to do is Fill the machine with fluid. Now, how I did it is uh, I bought Super S Hydraulic AW32. This is a premium hydraulic fluid that contains anti wear and anti foam additives and rust and antioxidant and corrosion inhibitors. So it's like a really, really nice fluid. They actually have something very similar to this, like a smaller bottle that they sell, and it's AW32 on the website. So it's what they recommend. Technically, they recommend. Uh, Thinner fluid in the winter and thicker in the summer. Uh, but I'm just going to run AW32 the whole time. It's really good stuff. They recommend it. They actually sell it on the website. So I went ahead and did with that. So they recommend you getting something where you can measure the fluid. So like a stick or something that's clean. So you can dip in there to see uh, in case you can't see to the bottom. Uh, they recommend you use this filling tube, which has measurements on the side, which is very important. So the very first time you're going to fill up to 100 milliliters and you're going to pour it all in, which it will fit. Then you're going to start your machine and move your hydraulic this way, that way. You'll hear it. The minute you hear the pump cavitating, like the starting for fluids, stop, turn off the pump. Uh, and they said to rec add another 50, a total of 150 milliliters of fluid. By then, it should be uh about close to 45 to 50 percent full then start cycling the pump in out in out do that like six to seven times per cylinder all the way in all the way out watch it when you take this one all the way down it's going to lift itself up so have a hangover however you want to do it uh but just make sure it goes all the way in all the way out several times to allow all the air to escape through the vent very very important once you keep doing that it, uh, it has anti-foam, so the liquid will sell, the air will come out. Just keep doing that. I did it continuously until basically there was no cavitating, no foam, no uh, no starvation of the pump. Then I took my dick stick, put it in there. When I added 150, it was just below half or right at half. I did it with this. I checked the fluid with the cylinders all the way filled, all the way empty, and halfway. And all of it can fit in the tank. And then I added another 15 milliliters, which had it just above halfway, about 60, 65%. That way, if I get on an incline, I'm not cavitating. Uh, as I run this and let it like kind of, you know, settle and everything, the fluid may change. Keep continuously checking that. Um, you can, fluid technically, technically can evaporate over time, slowly, very, 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 very slowly. Uh, you do have an event. Um, and I don't recommend messing with this anytime soon let the machine cycle let it break in get used to it um, the more you turn that up the higher the pressure 
the more chances of creating leaks. That's just how anything works. Uh, and it's harder on the pump. It's harder on everything. So I'm not saying you can't turn this. It's pre-adjusted from the factory. Uh, I do believe I glanced at it. It's right around running right around 2 MPAs. So 145 and 145. It's running at like 290 um, out of the box. It runs around 290. Uh, now you're thinking, oh, that's not that high of an MPA. Well, the way this is set up with that massive motor, lower KV, it, it's, it's holding the pressure no matter what you do. So you can dig really, really smooth and scale and have power behind it. It's not all about speed. Um, you can increase it. And I think it will hold it. I think the system's good for three and a half MPAs, I do believe, something like that. Uh, I know the Co they say the Cobalite runs three and a half. That's what the manufacturer told me. It's kind of hard to believe, honestly. It's more like two, two and a half MPAs typically. But probably three and a half is the max MPA and probably the same thing for this. They just tell you the max. I don't think they run at that. Uh, it's possible if you have a gauge and you have a factory system and you somehow get a gauge and show me three and a half, I'll be impressed. Uh, not to say that it can't handle it, but that's probably the max. So these are four millimeter diameter hoses everywhere through here. Uh, the feed and return seems to be bigger, maybe. Yep, it is. You can see them right there, the clear ones. That's the one that goes to and from the pump. You see it? From the pressure pump thing that adjusts the pressure and then one feeding the pump. So it does have thicker diameter there. And then once it gets to, you know, this one and other stuff, it narrows down. So it goes big to the top of it, which adjusts the pressure, and then it goes to the feed, and then everything else is like this, um, four millimeter. So it does have brackets, by the way, in case, uh, theoretically, there is space to add a fourth one, easily. A fourth one will fit here, by the way. You can move the, this receiver to here, or back over here somewhere, you can move it right. You can only add a fourth one, and then you can do the fourth one with a two-way valve that you flip a switch and a valve turns this way and it operates two on this side and then two on that side. So you can do like a quick disconnect and a auxiliary. It does have the rails for auxiliary. You can see it for auxiliary, like quick disconnect. And then you can obviously do a hydraulic quick disconnect for it as well. I've seen the, now the electric stuff, you don't have to add anything. The elect, they have electric uh, units like claws and cutters and all kinds of cool stuff like that and jackhammers that run off electric that are extremely powerful that will literally break a brick. It will break a brick. I've seen it. Uh, that plug up uh, into the power brick or whatever and then plug up to a channel and you run a really nice wire, same through these clamps with a quick disconnect like bullet billet things like you would like on a brushless motor like that, but they're black. They look really nice and they plug in and it'll be like a jackhammer, it'll be like this big jackhammer, and this arm obviously can lift it, and it will literally break up a brick. It's crazy. I've seen that. Uh, a gentleman actually showed me a video of it as well. Uh, I think Pat or whatever sent me a video like asking if this is the excavator I have, and it was. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. So it is an absolute monster machine. These cylinders are just, I mean, they're, it's insane. They're from, from my back of my palm to my pinky, that whole space. And I have big, wide, fat hands. Uh, I mean, these are beefy, really, really beefy. Um, extremely beefy on <laughs> both sides. Those are massive too. I think these two are the same size and then this one's a little bit shorter. But yeah, I'm truly impressed, guys. Um, so the setup isn't that bad. Once you get the fluid in there and it settles and everything, you can pop this lid back on. Uh, Oh yeah, you do have to put this lid on. I apologize, completely forgot about that. It's a small four millimeter bolt. You put the bolt in, you you take this, you slide it on there, you put the bolt on, and then there's four. Let me unlock this and let it down very carefully. I don't want to scratch it. There are these little, uh, it's a small Allen key. These little small ones, they're pre-screwed into this plate. So there's not gonna be any bolts or anything in the bag. These, uh, these hinges are already mounted. You just line it up, you unscrew them, uh, move them, set them to the side, line it up, and then screw one, screw one, screw one, screw one. So there's four of them that hold it on. Very easy to do. A lot of folks are gonna recommend thread lock on something like that so they don't vibrate loose on you. I tightened them, hand tightened them. You can strip those. 
because uh, there's no bolt on the other side. They're just tapped into this metal. So be careful. Uh, technically, if you did strip them, you could put a small little bolt on the other side and kind of tighten it up that way. So it's not the end of the world, um, but that's nice. There's a little plastic thing you peel off your MPA gauge. I peeled that off as well. Technically, you can remove the top of this hydraulic tank off so you can see it if it decavitates or whatever. Technically, you do that. I think this is what holds it on. It's kind of like threaded on and it keeps the lid tight on with this bolt right here. I think that's how that works. Um, and uh, because there's no other screws or anything, or maybe this unscrews the whole thing unscrews. I don't, I'm not 100% sure. I've never taken this off and I need to figure that out. Because I would like to one day see if it cavitates or if it gets low or whatever. It's a lot nicer to actually look down into it like you take the 336 tank top lid off the top of the tank so you can see what's going on. That's really important. So that's it. Now be careful. You don't want to kink or bend any of those hoses right there. You have to be very careful about that. You can create a leak. Uh, just to let you know, everything is brushless. This turn motor is massive. It is brushless. Uh, the drive motors are brushless. Everything is brushless on this. Uh, the ESCs have nice little cooling things on them. You can see them. Technically, there is off, they're all on right there. You can see the off and on switches. They're all, all technically on, but they have nice coolers. You can easily put like a roll of fans across those, all three of them, which I might do. Or maybe just put a really big one right here and just blow this way on all of them and it'll vent through here. Maybe do another fan right here, bringing air in or extracting air. I don't know. Um, you can technically put a fan right here. Like you just have so many options. Let me place this how it goes really quickly. I want to be careful so I'm not smashing or bending any of the hoses. You don't want them in an awkward position. So let me set this how it goes. Oh, whoops. I think that's how it goes. Hmm. Oh, it's fell off again. He's wanting to fall off. That's what you don't want. Set that on early. There you go. So that sits on like so, right? And that's all ran under there like that. Um, but yeah. And then just four bolts. Very easy. So that's really it. Lights, light covers, this lid, uh, mirrors, pin hydraulic fluid and then obviously stickers uh which i'm not going to do put your driver in there maybe paint some detail stuff but it doesn't take really much to get this going uh like i said you're gonna need a few of your own tools hydraulic fluid and a battery for sure um but yeah uh, as far as the controller it's pretty set up a way i didn't like it i'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you it was not cat controls like i like 336 was out of the box cat controls that's what i love about it this is not the case. I think it was in mode. If you go to your controller, which I can show you really quickly. So let me show you this part. And I'll do a separate video for mixing. Because that takes a second. But we can do it as well. And another thing with a large pump like that that doesn't spool up fast, there is a little bit of delay when you do mixing. I technically have mixing on it already. Just because I didn't want to have to turn my pump on just to move the boom to lo load it or do something like that, right? So let me put that on the stand and let me show you what I mean with the modes. So uh, the machine has to be off to be able to access this. So this is the transmitter. It is the Farsha FS i6 or whatever. This is technically the same transmitter. Kobolite did something cool and put like a uh, their own little graphic on it. I thought that was a nice touch, right? You got to give them credit when it's due. Go to settings, go to system, go to stick mode. So if you notice, look at those. I'm in mode four. When you buy it, you're in mode two. So mode two is, uh, is this is your stick. This is your main arm. This is your roll. This is your spin. And this is your roll. That is backwards to me. When you go to mode four, this is up and down for the main boom. Like it should be like down and then this should be down and then that should be up and then uh, roll your bucket in, roll your bucket out, right? And then this should be your st the front uh, stick forward, uh, back towards you and then forward, right? Uh, and then uh, spin left and then spin right. So all you have to do is put it in mode four. Then you go to function, you go to reverse, and you reverse only channel number two, 
which is this one. So once you put it in that mode, the only thing left to do is the reverse channel two because it'll be opposite. And instead of this uh, pulling up, it'll actually go down and then this would be down instead of up. So you, once you reverse that channel and mode four, you're exactly the same controls as the 336 um, or cat controls in my opinion. So that's what I wanted. I have this now set up as cat controls. Technically, there was already mixing on this. I'm going to do a separate video on that because this video is already long enough because um, you have to go in and find the channels and then do all that. So we'll explain that in a separate video. Uh, but I like this controller. So what I'll do now is I'll turn on the light and I'll back up a little bit and I'll kind of show you um, how it moves. It isn't the fastest machine, but it's extremely powerful. Uh, so my controller's on already. Always have your controller on. Uh, it doesn't matter if this lid is not on there tight. I'll screw it in afterwards. So we'll go ahead and plug this up. So technically I already have mixing. I could theoretically start moving it without turning on the pump, but I will turn it on as if you guys had it, uh, out of the box, right? So this is, and nothing else does anything. Unless, obviously, you add a light kit and you make it this, it's lights, that's fine, right? Like, this does nothing, that does nothing, and this does nothing. Obviously, you can make this your light kit or, or your rates or whatever you like, right? However you program it. So, basically, uh, this is your pump. This one right here is your pump. That is your pump. Simple as that. I've already ran and played with it so much, I don't know how much percent of battery I have left. Uh... But I'm going to go ahead and run it a little bit for you guys. So let me show you that I switched the controls to cat. So this is up. That's down. This is up. This is your bucket. Roll in. Roll the bucket out. Roll the bucket in. See that? This is stick uh, in. Stick out. Just like it would be in real life. Boom. Bring the stick in like you're digging. This is spin to left. And then this is spin to the right. So I basically have it exactly like cat controls. How it was was not the case. It was completely different, and I'm glad I switched it to this. If you like ISO controls, fine, I'm not mad at you. I like ASO, or I forget what it's called, but uh, technically on newer machines, you can just go in the machine and hit a couple buttons and it changes the controls, just like I just basically did in the transmitter. Probably even easier than this. So uh, this thing is a beast. When I mean a beast, I mean a beast. It is, this is full speed by the way. Look at that, butter smooth. Look how, look how smooth that is. Continuous, smooth. Uh, having all those controls hitting it at once does nothing to the flow rate of this hydraulic machine. Having a big, giant motor like that, low KV, high torque, it keeps that consistent flow through that block. And you're, it doesn't matter. Nothing is stopping that arm. Just like in real life, those excavators run like at two, 3,000 RPMs, and they just hold that pressure. And then the valve and the, you know, obviously it's a gas motor turning the uh, pump. This one's just electric. That is literally the only difference. And this thing is a beast. I would not get my hand under there and put this arm down because it will cut your fingers off. Look how smooth that is. Look how, look how smooth I just rolled that. Look, look at that. Scoop, roll, look at that. Butter smooth. It was, I mean, just so smooth. I, I can't ex express that enough. The cat was smooth. It was a little bit faster, yes. But if I would have hooked into the dirt and tried to pull with the cat, that little motor spinning so fast would not be able to have the same power and torque to run that same consistent flow pressure. It would have dropped and then I would have lost power and I wouldn't be able to dig and... Um, in, in certain situations, obviously. Obviously, in top soil sand, all that, what I've used it, that thing's a monster. I love the 336. It has its place. This thing is in a whole new category. And a lot of it is not just the flow and having a bigger motor. It's the weight. The 336 weighs tw uh, 21 or 22 pounds. Uh, I remember adding weight to it and making it more heavy, which did make a difference. Those two pounds are huge for that machine. Those two pounds is the difference of lifting up something heavier, adding an attachment, whatever it may be. Those two pounds was a huge increase. 
This son of a gun, dry, with no fluid and no battery, uh, weighs 57. When I added fluid and my 7200 in the back of it, and the mirrors and this little plate and that bolt and whatever else I had to in this lid, uh, made this with everything as is right now, with the little die in there too, uh, with the and the battery, um, it weighs 59 pounds. I put it on the scale. Uh, it's really 60. I think that scale, the way it was sitting on the scale, may have compromised a pound or so, maybe off about a pound or so. I honestly believe it's 60 pounds. I struggle to lift this thing. When you lift it out of a box, please have a friend. I cannot emphasize that enough. Uh, I almost hurt my back that day. It is extremely heavy, and the weight is the biggest um, thing when it comes to digging is the weight. Not to say the cat isn't powerful enough. It's just not heavy enough. Uh, you need power and weight. It's a balance of both. The cat from the factory has good power. It runs great. Everyone loves it that owns it. The biggest issue I had with the 336 is it's one of those machines that is perfect when you do stickers, lights, sound box, whatever. But the minute you mess with the hydraulics, you can get yourself in a really bad situation like I did. But thankfully... Uh, I ordered all the parts for it. They'll be here and it'll be better and more improved in my opinion. Uh, so I cannot wait for that. Stay tuned for that, by the way. So this machine is just in a whole new category, uh, bigger weight, more power. It's just a monster. It's literally a monster. Um, it's, it's crazy. The detail is there. I think once I put like the, the, the other sticker that goes here and the, the Volvos and everything and all the warning stickers and everything on it, it's going to look even better. I always see this with the Earth Digger uh, stickers instead of having like uh, other stickers on there. Like they usually do the Earth Digger. A few people put the actual Volvo stickers on there. I commend them because I think it looks better as scale. Uh, so let me show you my mixing. I won't show you how to do it today, but I'll show you it really quickly. So it takes a second to kick in, but then once it kicks in and you're like digging, you won't notice the difference. So now it's kicking in. Once it's kicking in, see that? But watch initially. See how? See how it takes a second to kick in? But once it's kicked in and you're moving around and that pump's turning, you're golden. You won't notice the difference. And then obviously you can just Flip the switch, and it's done. That lower KV just takes a second to start turning. It's crazy. But once it starts turning, it's a beast. So, and here's the thing. Here's the spin on it. It's obviously endless. People say it has a lot of slop to it. And I'm like, oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. You can see it move a tiny bit. Uh, I, there's a fix that's probably going to cost me a dollar. And I'm going to show you guys that, but I really don't want to open anything on this. I really want it to run as is. Uh, if you can get this motor on and feel comfortable removing this motor and seeing where the two gears mesh, uh, I'll tell you the secret what a guy did is took a rubber glove and put it in between the gear mesh and like the gears and made it to where it kind of, the rubber glove takes that slack out that's in there. I know it's crazy. Uh, I'll look it up to be 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure he said a rubber glove like the rubber part and it takes it makes the tolerances tighter in the gear mesh and it keeps that little bit of play you see there every once in a while uh but that like if i'm digging and stop right there that's not gonna bug me one bit like are you kidding me that's a little picky i guess that's for perfect scale videos i guess maybe that matters but the way it digs is very scale the speed is very scale and the power is just unreal uh, they say it can lift 154 pounds and it has 33 pounds of digging force or something like that per square inch or digging force. I don't know how they worded it, but it is crazy and it weighs 60 pounds. So yeah, uh, it's something else. So I'm really, really, really happy with it. Kind of bummed out for the price. It'll give you the lights and the Volvo stickers, but hey, you know, like, what can you do? Um, and then obviously they say ready to run, but technically you need a battery and fluid. So it's not really ready to run, but close enough. They do have a kit version, by the way. Um, so there's that. This is the viscosity and what the fluid looks like. The AM, uh, the, uh, yeah, the AW32. It's darker than my all, um, my all purpose Lucas. Probably would have been fine in it, but 
I'm going to go with basically the brand and the way that it advertises on the website. I just want to be sure. So later on, they're like, oh, you didn't have the right fluid in there and it damaged it or whatever. Or this having rust inhibitors, anti-wear inhibitors, all that techno babble stuff help with temperature, help with wear and everything. It just... It just made perfect sense to do what they recommend, right? Uh, and it's a huge one gallon, so I don't have to worry about fluid for a while. Um, you can use a, a stick. or I like wood because it shows exactly where the line of the oil was, so it's very accurate. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to zip these screws back on. And uh, just, uh, uh, I checked the, uh, the tracking status on the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The Volvo uh, scale stickers. Uh, it just... I guess I had to ship from China to California, from California to me. I don't know why I wouldn't go from China to me. I would have already had it. It just arrived in California, and I guess they're going to ship it out, or maybe they got, like, bulk, or maybe they got the plans or something, and they make them. I don't know how it works, but that's weird how it shipped, or maybe they were waiting on more. I'm not 100% sure on that, but uh, it will hopefully get here soon, um, just uh, just so I can, you know, take care of it. That tells you DHL is pretty awesome. I think it took them from, they shipped it out on the 20, uh, hold on, they shipped it out, it only took, it didn't take long, they shipped it out on a, uh, was it, I can't remember if it was a Thursday, or, I think it was a Thursday or Friday, and I got it like that Monday, or something like that, so it was only like four or five days, uh, just amazing, DHL is amazing, international, they did a great job, they didn't destroy my package. Uh, I think I mentioned the shipping timeline. I'll verify that. So yeah, uh, there you have it, guys. Uh, super, super happy with everything. Um, it turned out great. Uh, this video is long enough. This thing is a beast. I won't be like doing videos where I lift stuff and showing you guys how it digs and everything. There's some cool attachments and cool buckets for this. I really want to share with you guys. Uh, this thing is just a monster. I actually put it next to the dump truck. It's not that bad. This would be more like a larger, you know larger like plant or mining kind of operation not as big as a full-size mining but like when you're wanting to move a lot of volume a large you know 480 is a large machine it is bigger than 336 so it doesn't look that bad side by side a 480 is a much bigger much larger machine um honestly so than a 336 so it's not that bad it is i know it's 114 scale and the other one's 116 scale typically a lot of the folks run 114 scale like this to be honest with you and this is more common um but yeah so i'm super super happy with everything uh very easy to set up and put together just take your time fill it properly don't make a mess don't strip anything just take your time assembling it that's why i didn't do it while i was doing it because it took me like i think like two hours like i literally was tinkering and looking at stuff and just i took my time with it uh really take care of these expensive machines like this because uh, they hold their value pretty well. Like, uh, I'm not saying I'm going to sell it. Probably never will because especially the 336 has sentimental value. This one is another one of my 10-year goal items. So definitely don't want to sell it or don't even plan on selling it. I'm, I'm going to have this as long as I can. But it's just it's just a really incredible machine. So, yeah, there you have it, guys. So stay tuned. Uh, I'll be doing probably – I'll probably do the mixing video and the sticker video in one and then we'll probably do the first day. I was hoping to get it done today, but I'm running out of time. Uh, and the next few days is supposed to rain and snow and like 20s and stuff. I'm not going taking that machine out there and that crap. Uh, it's, it's too nice for that. Uh, it, it, obviously, it's going to be long in dirt and stuff. I know that. But I just want good dirt so it doesn't like ruin it and just get all over and you can't clean it. Like uh, I like to actually take care of this one. I'm still going to dig and put it through its paces. Don't worry about that. That's going to be no issue. I just want to let you guys uh, know. And then uh, other plans and other stuff will come up for it. I'll let you guys know. Uh, I have other stuff already in the works for it. Same thing for the 336. Tons of stuff in the works for it. Tons of stuff coming. I just cannot wait to share all that with you guys. So that's going to do it for this one, man. Uh, I'm uh, And gals and ladies. Uh, and men's. <laughs> and yeah. It, it's just. I, I'm just like kind of sidetracked. Because like it's. It's just so incredible, like how thick that is with the reinforcing right here. I'm just, every time I look at it, I notice something new. Um, I'm just really, really happy. So, um, yeah, there you have it, guys. I cannot wait to get the stickers on it. So, yeah, I did peel off, um, where are they at? This one and this one. 
these two were on the back right here it's not very scale having them on there so i'm going to clean that up with a little alcohol or some kind of adhesive cleaner i'm gonna clean that up you know just clean it up and put the stickers on it you can see the little green lights from the ESAC right there right there and right there there's three of them that are the same size i think i forget what amperage they are i think they're 30 or 40 amp little uh brushless ESCs, and the other one the big one is the 60 amp uh, i really like to get a cooler on that one i think that one's gonna get the warmest out of everything um and technically that size of esc uh, on one of the sides either has a metal plate or some kind of grate you can peel part of the plastic off around there and actually put a fan onto it and tap it into the main power source because it's a power distribution thing right there so you can tap into any power you need uh, there's plenty of room for a sound box plenty of room to actually install a fan uh, like right in here like boom put a fan like right here like right there and that'll help exhaust the heat out like you know all kinds of cool mods and then you can put a fan on this other side because look at all that exhaustion by the motor look at all these venting love the venting that's what i'm truly impressed on is uh all the venting so uh yeah look at that great that looks really really good right there i like the way that looks so yeah really impressive amazing machine there's even space behind the driver i might put some like tools in like a fire extinguisher i don't know something back there. there's like a ton of room i know you can mount a fire extinguisher with a bracket and some bolts whoops and some bolts over here somewhere i might do that i think that'll help it look scale i think it's a 116 standard scale fire extinguisher so it'd be scale to the guy so that's all really matters it'll be fine being on there maybe do like a chains like a little chain and hook stuff i don't know uh oh I, I was meant to look under here to see if there's anywhere to hook a chain and there's not like there's nothing here either i guess you could loop it through there but like i was hoping there's like a loop somewhere on here and there's not i'm sure there's buckets that have it uh there's quick disconnects that have it too so we'll look into all that there's tons of other stuff I'm looking into. So that's going to do it for this guy, th this video. Uh, just pop in these last four screws. That's no big deal. And this thing's pretty much ready to dig. Uh, just waiting on the on the stickers and to do some good old mixing. So that will hopefully by then the weather will pass. And uh, that'll be it. So thanks for watching. This little guy wants to go outside. I got to take him out. So thanks for watching, guys. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.